town. So, I know she's shy. She is shy and she wouldn't have come, but she is also in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'll I guess... Take over from here, but I'm going to turn off my camera right now, but you can admit anyone in there, you should be a co-host, correct? Oh, so you... yes, I can. All right. Well, I guess I'll turn mine off too. And you guys yeah, have you a... want us to turn it on, then we can do that. So I can turn it off too, so Ian has to talk to himself. That'd be kind uh -uh. of fun. Ha happens all the time. I am married, so <laughs> all right, guys, I don't get it. About it. I don't get it. <laughs> okay, so uh, here we go. I'm going to start to bring everybody in. I hope you all are ready. And if you're not, that's okay, okay too. That is okay too. Uh, there we go. Let's try. Let's try admitting Sherry first. Just to see how this works. Okay. There she is. Perfect. Oh, whoopsie. Um, what did I just do? Paul, can you still, can you say anything, Paul? I can hear you. Oh, my goodness. I'm here. Great. Paul Grusani is here and ready. And hi, I love it. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Okay, so I'm going to bring in everybody else here. We have... We go there we go joining 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 ba, 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 ba. okay hi sherry <laughs> hi ian hi mikey hi sherry how you doing good good okay hello everyone hi sherry Oh, hello, Paul. That you light up. Mayor Grisanti's phone image lights up when you talk. <laughs> oh, boy. We wouldn't have it any other way, Paul. <laughs> uh, okay, so we. it looks like everybody who's here is on time. So that's perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And forgive me if I'm not looking at everybody. I'm... Uh, you know, bringing people in, uh, unmuting, uh, video chatting, all kinds of stuff. A multitask millennial at the helm. So beware. Uh, welcome to Conversations with the Mayor, uh, with Mayor Paul Grisanti and May, uh, immediate past mayor. Is that the? Okay, immediate past mayor, uh, Mikey Pearson. Um, uh, this is brought to you by the Malibu Chamber of Commerce. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bruce Silverstein is unable to attend due to a family emergency. Uh, so we did go to the depths of Malibu and found Mikey. So Mikey, very much appreciated that you're here. Um, thank you for getting all cleaned up and uh, joining us and putting on a collared shirt. Yeah, I know. I take off my <laughs> ratty old shark sweatshirt. Yeah. And uh, Mayor Paul Grisanti is doing the Lord's work right now. He is uh, going to be attending uh, how do we call it? Game five? I think we call it game five. Um, so I appreciate you for being there and I cannot wait for you to cheer loudly. I don't want to hear your voice tomorrow. I want to hear just whispers. So thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> and thank you, uh, Barbara Bruderlin for being our Zoom master and uh, Chris from Vivid Candy. Oh, there she is. Hi, Barbara. And Chris from Vivid Candy for being our beloved chair and webmaster. Oh, there he is. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you're a pop back in. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Ian. I'm the the one of the past chairs of the Malibu Chamber of Commerce and a local attorney. Um, we've changed the format of this event. So beware, Mike and Paul. Uh, we changed the format to be a little bit more inviting for outside comment. Uh, one of the biggest suggestions is that I'm too boring and we need some uh, fire during the fireside chat. Let's call it a waterside chat. We don't want to name I was thinking, but I wasn't going to say anything. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so as such, for everybody, please, everybody in the audience, please keep your microphones muted. If you would like to opine, I was going to call Erica out. Erica, please keep your microphone muted. <laughs> uh, so as such, keep your microphones muted. 
if you like, if you would like to opine or opine, depending on what part of the country you're from, uh, please type into the chat and I'll be on the lookout for you to unmute. Uh, as moderator, I'm gonna do my best or try my best to call on those who would like to speak on the topic of discussion at the time. Uh, if you have a discussion topic that you would like to talk about, type that into the chat and I'll be sure to put it on my list over here that I'm staring at. Uh, so that way everybody uh, is satisfied or hopefully will become satisfied. With that, Paul and Mikey, my Malibu West neighbors, howdy. Thank you. <laughs> hello, hello. Greetings. <laughs> Salutations. Uh, first topic I have here, and please be, begin typing in, and I will put it on my list, and I'll prioritize them. Uh, we have oh, somebody jumping right in. We have the school separation is advancing. As a Juan Cabrillo grad, Malibu High grad, I'm very interested in this. And we have a meeting, I think, November sixth, fifth, tenth. Okay, I, numbers, I'm a lawyer, numbers. Uh, November 10th, uh, thoughts? Uh, essentially, everyone's gonna be telling LACO that they want out, right? Yes. Hopefully everybody from Malibu <laughs> you, will be telling LACO they want out. Yeah, and there's- Maybe even a few people from Santa Monica will say they want out. <laughs> And they are. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got a lot going on there though. We're gonna have a community-wide survey um, coming out very soon, like within days about, because we're in the uh, envisioning process for what we want our district to look like. Um, so that's gonna be broadcast widely through all city channels and media outlets, et cetera, et cetera. And we really hope to get a lot of people to participate in that. Um, because a big part of this meeting on November 10th is answering the nine criteria, which, uh, which are important part of moving forward. The, the LACO nine criteria, which their initial report showed that we only satisfied two of them, which was really bizarre um, and a little hard to understand. One of them was, uh, I can't remember the wording of it, but, but that our communities are distinct and different. And they said, no, basically, no, they're, they're very similar communities. I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just an odd one for us, you know? So obviously uh, we see the world differently um, than them. So um, community participation on the survey and certainly signing up to speak on the 10th and being a part of that whole process is, is really, really important for moving this forward. I agree. Uh and, and raise, you can even raise your physical hand in the audience if you want to talk on the subject. Just I'll find a way to, to, to capture you in, in the conversation. Uh, we have a replacement planning commissioner for David Wilde. Mark Wetton is going to be sworn in Monday night. Um, is there anything you want to say behind Mark Wetton's back before he joins the planning commission? Yeah, I didn't even know that was public information. That'd be the first thing I'd have to say. <laughs> um, uh -oh. <laughs> Um, it is part of the agenda packet, by the way. Oh, yeah, but I didn't, didn't mention his name, and I, wow, I didn't think it did. Maybe it did. Um, yeah. Um, it has his application, so. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, this I is recording, so I'm going to go ahead and. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, basically, uh, I really appreciate David and all the time he put in. And um, for quite a while, he's other, had other things he's you know wanted to move on to. And he's, you know, he really hung in there for, it's a really hard job and he hung in there. And uh, so I've been talking with Mark about this actually a very long time, even, you know, when I first appointed a, a planning commission, it wasn't the right time for him. Mark has a great background in both the community, but he understands, he understands, um, he understands property rights. He understands the building process. You know, he was a mortgage broker for years. He's built a number of projects, his own different projects. So he understands what's going on in that world. And, you know, and he shares my environmental concerns. So uh, I'm excited uh, that he's going to uh, take this on. And um, with that, we'll see how it goes. And I just want to let you know, I, I double as a TMZ reporter. So I was able to just find the news and break it 
So thank you. Yeah, uh, that's great. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You got, sometimes you got to have a couple of jobs to be ready to go, you know? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, so, oh, there we go. Uh, Westward Beach. Uh, this is some real deep. Oh, oh, Sherry, did you raise your hand? I'm sorry. No. Okay. Uh, this, some real whew, Malibu drama at its, at its core. Uh, replacing parallel parking with angled parking. Um, you know, as a sunset restaurant goer slash beach goer, um, I know my skin is very pale, but I do see the sun every now and then. Um, you know, there's, you know, I personally believe that there would be less turmoil <laughs> for the parking if you could park all of your tires on pavement. Um, and I guess the project is being appealed. <laughs> That's true. Okay. That is true. Uh, has, has anybody actually seen the appeal yet? I've heard that it was happening, but uh, as of yesterday evening, I hadn't been able to get a copy of the appeal. So I haven't seen but it, but I just talked to Rob DeVoe right before this call. Uh, he was down there talking with a few concerned people on the project, and uh, it actually went well. But, uh, you know, this project's been in the works for years, mm -hmm. years and years, and it's, it's been done with grant money. Um, and, um, yeah, I know the raising sea level does pose some interesting issues in general, and it'll eventually probably impact that area. But that area, to me, is very dangerous when it's crowded right now. And it, I just think, you know, cleaning it up a little bit and adding a bike path, walking path, and uh, and the angle parking, keeping all the tires on the pavement makes perfect sense. And, you know, and as long as we're sensitive to, to the sea level issue, which I think we have tried to be. So, but now that it's an appeal, it's, that's, it's just, you know, I'd be surprised if the project was supposed to happen before this summer. That looks like it's gonna be unlikely with the appeal, I'm guessing. Chris. Sorry, I, I it's asked, going to be interesting. Oh, oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to ask: I, it, Does that mean there's more parking when it's landed, or is it just safer? Uh, you know, just a simple question. Both. Both. It I gets think. you. It gets you depending on the angle of the parking, anywhere from thirty to fifty percent more more cars parked in ah. a certain lineal length of street. That makes sense. So they, parallel parking, and it's a nightmare. I mean, and you're parking halfway right. anyways every time. And I might point out, and it wasn't really a design of the project, but just by physical reality, prevents large motor homes from parking there too. Mm -hmm. uh, which to Not me, good. yeah, it's always just taking up so much space, whether it's travelers or, or, or otherwise. But so I think, I, you know, that doesn't bother me at all. You know, it's funny. I think uh, the Sunset Restaurant's really going to like this because that's their number one problem is an RV parking in front of them blocking the view. So. I make sure they're very involved in what's going on. They know the design. Um, you know, they reached out a while ago because, you know, they've been through a lot at that location lately, a lot of different issues, and they just yeah. didn't want one more issue landing on their head. But I agree with you, Chris. Very cool. Sounds like a good project. Uh, when would it ideally get done if it, if it doesn't get appealed, I guess? It is appealed. So, I mean, if it's the same schedule as the Bell property appeal, you know, we'll be 80 years old before it's done. Oh, no. So, um, <laughs> I know that uh, Rob the Bell is trying to work with them and say, hey, this grant funding doesn't last forever. You need to hear this appeal quickly. Or, or they, don't always he, they don't always hear them. Sometimes staff would just dismisses them too. So, I, we'll see what happens. Very cool. It's a... Uh, it's it's definitely the kind of thing that the Coastal Commission is 100% in favor of. We're talking about increased beach access and parking. And, you know, I, I can't imagine that staff is not going to go leave us alone and tell the city of Malibu to go do it. But we'll see. Uh, Bar Barbara, you had your hand raised? Uh, yeah, I would think that there should be some kind of... Uh... Uh, talk about 
that we're going to have to frequently change this. You know, we can do it this way now. And then when the tide changes, we're going to have to maybe do it again, like not make such a big deal out of it as if it's going to be like that forever and ever, you know, but changes as things go. <laughs> anyway, it's crazy. It's taken so long. Uh, yes. Speak, speaking of which, uh, the Department of Beaches and Harbors rebuilt the roadway that washed away, right? Is that right? It was about three, yes, they did. 300 spaces, approximately. Got some, uh, yeah, th they... so this is just piling on the drama, forgive me. This is more roadway drama in Malibu. I don't. I don't know that they actually paved it yet. They were originally supposed to pave it a few days ago, and that, that date slipped by for some reason. But I didn't check it this morning on my way out of town, so. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I haven't seen it either. I think it's a tricky issue in that, um, yeah, they, they're gonna rebuild it and save that whole area. But, you know, the, the concern which isn't just about there is by putting in riprap has an effect on sand replenishment. So people love to see sand replenishment, but I, from looking at what's happened at Broad Beach, Broad Beach doesn't care about sand replenishment, you know, right. the, the tides and do what they want to do and the different swell directions. So it's, um, it's going to be a tricky issue into the future of Malibu. There's another spot just outside city limits uh, towards coastline that is getting chewed away pretty good up towards the highway. And um, I encountered some people that showed me that. And we've alerted Caltrans, go, you know, you better have a plan because if that gets cut off, <laughs> well, yeah, that's the entire PCH. So dealing with these issues is gonna be very, very tricky going forward. And we have, uh... oh, here we go. Fire rebuilds and fee waivers. Uh, you know, building and safety permits. People are saying it's difficult to get inspectors out to their to their properties. Um, Paul, you had talked about uh, some of the measures that uh, the city is taking to to help remedy this. Well, the the city has been striving to hire qualified individuals to increase the number of people working for the city. That that can you know do inspections that can can help take in people's applications so mm -hmm. that is something something that's going on so you know i i wish mm -hmm. i wish there was a place called uh, government officials are us where we could just drop by and fill up a couple of bus loads and bring them over and put them to work but apparently that doesn't exist right now Right. Unfortunately, the yeah. pandemic affected uh, G O R S. <laughs> and and I, I have a, I have a little. I'm going to share my view on it. So building a house is incredibly difficult. Um, everything to do from all the decisions you make, hiring people, permits, dealing with the city, and God only knows. It's a very very difficult process, particularly for people that um, did not wish to rebuild or want to rebuild or know how to rebuild. My strong suggestion for anybody experiencing delays is to get a hold of Paul or I, email us, and let us redirect an email because it, it turns out very often these delays are for other reasons. And Yolanda and her team are really good at getting on that and moving things forward. So I think people that understand the process, the reason they're getting done so much quicker is they know that that ongoing communication and, and is important and they know what to expect. When you don't know what to expect, having someone like Paul or I help you and make sure that everyone's aware of where you're at is can be really a, a game changer. So that would be my advice there. And also, I think there was potentially new software. Is that... Yeah, we actually are. Yeah, we're in the process of upgrading some software. Actually, a, a purchase of some software is agendized as one of the uh, consent calendar items for Monday. Okay. And I, I really hope that we don't spend four hours talking about whether or not this is the right software. But that that is a. Uh, 
something that should be put in place as soon as possible. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, usually consent calendar items are, are almost pre-approved and then you just sort of say yay or nay on that last part of the, am I, am I just, yeah, am I poking the bear? Calendar. <laughs> An interesting theory. <laughs> opportunity from the public or from the council to pull it and ask a question about it. Okay. And, uh, you know, typically the, uh, the question that gets asked is very easy to answer, but occasionally it goes on and on and on. And, you know, you just kind of go, we, we got to do a better job of publishing what, what our concerns are, and then uh, maybe we'll bring it back. So, and uh, I have a note here that well, city halls reopened, right? Uh, and and which is great. Uh, Love to go and see and go to the planning department and get things approved. It's so beautiful. Um, are there any? Is there a date that we're planning on resuming certain city council meetings? Are you waiting for a certain? Uh, percentage of, of Malibu citizens not testing positive or, you know, is there a, for the virus, excuse me, not testing positive for anything else, just the virus or, or is, are we sort of going by uh, any measured date? Uh, forgive me, the question is very disjointed. I just have never been in a situation like this before where I don't know when I'm going to be able to see your pretty faces up at behind the, that large table up at the uh, uh, meeting room. Unfortunately for us, we don't know when you're gonna be able to mm. see our our beautiful, handsome faces <laughs> up there on the podium, but it's, uh, it's, it's not, uh, you know, right now we're in a period where the, the infections are dropping and everything, but there are people who point to the charts for, Infections for a year ago, and there was a similar drop about that time, and then it blew up again. So, right now, the uh, the objective is to get the number of people vaccinated and the number of infections down to the point where people feel like they have a handle on it. And as long as we're having breakthrough infections and everything else, I don't I don't see a, a great deal of optimism although i would really really like to not be the second uh city mayor who never had an in-person meeting to run <laughs> oh that's right our first virtual mayor good times um <laughs> the first mikey's the first virtual mayor right. yeah. you'd be the second paul the second yeah sound like a pope I think too, you know, we, we don't have our own health department, so we're really following LA County Health. And right now to open to the public would involve, you know, basically seeing if they're vaccinated, checking their temperature, you know, there's a bunch of steps that, frankly, I'll be honest, and my opinion is I don't want to sit in chambers for six hours with a mask on and do a meeting. I don't want to do it. That's, that's, it's, that's no, it's hard. It's, it's no fun. So, um, but I think, you know, we're going to most, I know a couple cities are opening up and, um, but uh, I think my sense is that we're going to wait till LA County health is sort of, you know, backed off where we're at right now, which is basically mm -hmm. still maps on indoors. And it seems like there's going to be certain vaccine. I just want to get into you know, countrywide drama here. Uh, it looks like certain vaccine mandates may be coming, uh, especially for restaurants. I mean, they're already for bars, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I, I guess I'm not going to ask your preference, uh, but uh, I mean, how do you feel that's going to affect Malibu business? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, go, yeah, go ahead, Paul. <laughs> you take this I, one. I think that what's going to happen is that you know the business people are going to adapt and do whatever they have to do to make it happen and i've, I've been approached by several people who, who think the city of malibu should take a firm anti-mandate thing and 
and really make a big fuss and because the county and the state and the federal government will listen to us, which I think is uh, a little misguided. Although I also have a great opinion of us. I, I don't believe that the people at the state and the federal government are panting to hear what our opinions are. <laughs> And personally, I'm, you know, my personal feeling is, you know, I'm fine with, with mandates, you know, on this because we have, we have laws and mandates on a lot of other things that can hurt you. And, you know, I know, wait, and I know too many people that have died related to COVID, including one just the other day. And I just, you know, I know the vaccine comes with its own risks. I think, you know, I don't know anyone who's died from the vaccine. So I, uh, I feel that risk is, you know, to me more acceptable to open up our economy and get going again but that's my personal feeling thank you i'm uh, happy to go uh, along with you on that mikey i'll join you too uh barbara yeah i'm going to be sending out uh, a survey to the businesses that could be affected to see how they feel i know that people that i've spoken to their main concern is how do they have that extra person on board that will check? And maybe the city could help, you know, with a little bit of funding to help them hire that one extra person or deal with that. Um, there's also, they need to have a written plan in place, but I have well, access to that um, to help people with it. I, I, I can get people copies, but I know that some of the restaurants are, are all for anything that protects their employees and, and guests. So it's something that could be considered, I think. And I'll let you know how the survey comes out. Yeah, thanks. It's a tricky situation, you know, particularly trying to take care of our local businesses and the restaurants. And I've talked to a number of them too. And I, I haven't heard that that's imminent, but maybe I'm wrong, that restaurants will be mandated. I know about bars and nightclubs and all that, but... Uh, We'll see. I don't know. It was it was on the table of the LA County agenda, you know, of course. But the other cities are actually implementing right now, like Culver City. They're they're ready to put it in place, and um, other cities too, which I don't have off the tip of my tongue. But other local cities are doing it. So that's why I was wondering if perhaps Malibu had it, in you know, in their sites. I, I've been asked that question and I'm, you know, if somebody's going to bring it forward. I'm very unaware of that. No. Uh, all right. Um, my, my next issue, you know, parking is one real estate's always another big major Malibu issue. Uh, what are we going to do with all of our vacant land? I sound like I can do a Seinfeld impression if you'd like. But uh, what are we going to do with all of our vacant land? There's, I mean, I'm looking outside. I'm in the Miramar building right below, well, not where you are, but where you're going to be returning to City Hall. <laughs> and, you know, we've got these big lots and there's the park and ride triangle over there. I know I'm pointing. No one can see what I'm pointing at, but there, I promise you it's right there. Uh, so what, what can we do? Uh, we can do just about anything as long as the citizens of Malibu are in favor of it. And our big problem right now is clearing enough bandwidth. So, so, so we can uh, ha having Irony. enough bandwidth so that we can deal with this and and have some meetings. Yep. And I think the ban part of the bandwidth is financial too. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very coming around, but yeah, this is. You know, there's over 20 council approved projects that are just sitting because they just have fallen off the shelf. There's just no bandwidth. There's no there's no staff to do it. There's no money to do it. So this is this is a big one that's on sitting on the shelf right now while we're trying to, you know, get back and get the city moving again. And things are going the right direction. You know, uh, they really are. Uh, you know, if you, things are going well as far as uh, um our revenue and all of that. So I think it, I think uh, it's, it's moving higher on the list to hopefully happen here soon. Excellent. Uh, we also had a, uh, oh, here I have a, updates on the pesticide ban. Uh, thank you, Keon uh, Shulman for, for really spearheading and pushing this. Um, 
She was an award recipient for the chamber uh, th earlier this year, right, Barbara? Um, uh, any new notes on the pesticide ban, uh, where it's going, the effects that it, is, that it has had thus far? The, the very interesting part is that our adoption of it is now being used to try and extend the, uh, the ban into Ventura County. So uh, I think it's a great thing that we're doing it. I think Kian deserves more credit than anybody I've ever heard of mm -hmm. for, for the amount of effort and time she, that's been put into this. And uh, I'm, I can't uh, very much admire what she's been able, what she and Joel have been able to accomplish. Yeah, Ventura, did they have their meeting yet, Paul? I know it's very soon, if it's not, if not to their planning commission passed um, an ordinance like ours. So I, I wrote a personal letter to their, their city council urging them to do the same. And, and other cities beyond Ventura are asking, you know, to look at the ordinance and talking about it. So like, there's a city up north and I'm blanking on who it is that's looking at adopting what we've done. So, yeah, hopefully it spreads up and down the coast. Not the pesticide, the ban. The ban. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, the pesticides are already there. We're, right. We're, we're hoping to spread the ban. But good. thank you for, for making that clear, Ian. <laughs> Always here to make it clear, no problem. <laughs> uh, next topic here we have, oh, I see Sherry, oh, Barbara and Sherry. Barbara, we need to get it off the shelves of major retailers. Um, it's not sold in Malibu. It's coming in by the pesticide companies. <laughs> That's who's, and they're actually lying to the people that use it, saying it's it's non-toxic, you know, oh. from wildlife, and it's actually just not true. Uh, I found a massive bait box, like a bait box hotel at one of the shopping centers a number of months ago and called the owner. And he right away was like, I sent him a picture. He's like, he was fuming mad. It's like, they're not supposed to do that. And he had it removed immediately. And, and so, you know, it's even people who own property, including residents, don't know that it's on their property. Mm -hmm. uh, Sherry also wrote, another mountain lion was tagged uh, western part of Santa Monica Mountains. P99 is beautiful, and she reported, and she is reported to be healthy. That's great. Awesome. Thank you for that. Oh, good, some good news. Uh, the next thing here is uh, homelessness in Malibu. Uh, oh, I see Mikey's staring at me like I <laughs> some knowledge on this topic. Oh, right. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm Paul's appointee. Hey, Paul. Yeah, you're the chair of the homelessness <laughs> group, so study group. So why don't you tell us what you're doing? Have you, have you solved our homeless situation? <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I, first off, I encourage everyone uh, to join the meetings, uh, I believe, and it's on my calendar. So I'm just going to pull it up here. We just held one. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, third, um, third Tuesday is coming to mind here. Um, and now, uh, co or conveniently, I can't pull up my calendar. Uh, third Tuesdays at two, from 2 to 4 p.m. Sometimes it runs um, a little bit longer. Uh, but we are in our early formation and we're gearing up. Uh, we've just recently adopted our own rules of procedure and decorum, which is kind of like bylaws. Um, we founded uh, four ad hoc committees, and uh, those are, you know, just members of our task force, uh, fewer than, than six, so it doesn't violate any Brown Act, or so hopefully it doesn't violate Brown Act, that would be bad, uh, but they're researching and uh, providing reports uh, to, back to the task force, um, and uh, the ad hocs, uh, so the first one is the assessment of current affairs to try to see what's going on within and without Malibu. Uh, to see everything that would affect Malibu. Uh, fire, health, and public safety ad hoc, um, which is just like its namesake. Uh, there's a legal analysis ad hoc, which I'm a member of, uh, and emergency and temporary services ad hoc, um, which is uh, essentially 
analyzing just that um, with the added kicker of a potential alternative, temporary alternative sleeping locations, which apparently is not a hot button issue for anybody. Um, so I'm just, <laughs> I want, uh, Mikey, I want your face to be the face of the conversations with the mayor. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's that's where we are right now. The the groups are um, very much, or the ad hocs and the task force is very much involved. And uh, you can read some of the agenda items and the minutes online. I very much encourage people to join. Uh, we've had a couple people sign up, but but no one from the public has yet to speak or scream at us. Whichever I haven't, you know, <laughs> we're just people. Well, there's always that to look forward to. <laughs> And Paul's going to come to our next meeting and he'll be the one screaming at us. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I, I, I think I would like maybe add one more thing too. So um, the kind of current topic's been the homeless situation in Malibu, mm -hmm. Mal I'm sorry, Zuma Creek area and Zuma in general. It's where a, a sizable portion of our homeless population is at this point. And people are wondering why nothing's been done. And the answer is, is sadly, it involves the law. <laughs> so we are working with our outreach workers, the sheriff's host team, homeless team, and their MET team, their metal evaluation team. And they are in the area working with people, but you can't clear out an area without 30 days notice. It has to go through LA County, some committee I'd never heard of, and they have to approve it. We're trying to push our elected officials to lengthen that 30 days just due to you know, current fire hazards. Um, and we've had no luck. So if we have no luck in shortening that time, it won't be till, I'm gonna have to guess a little bit, November 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, in that area somewhere that a concerted effort to sort of clean that area up happens just due to the legal requirements. Mm -hmm. And you know, wow. Chris. So if you guys don't mind, uh, so it takes a 30 day notice to clear an area where all the homeless kind of hang out, like you were saying, Zuma Canyon, Mikey? Yeah, it's, it's a really tricky situation because, you know, because of, I, I assume it's really around Martin versus Boise, you know, it's not illegal to be homeless. And if a city doesn't have shelter for a homeless individual, then they're illegally allowed to sleep on public property. As you know, we've taken legal action to narrow where that can be due to fire danger and health concerns, et cetera. But it's still, it's, you know, this is just a really tricky part of the law that makes it really hard for a lot of cities. Um, so yes, there's 30 days and our law enforcement is not the city of Malibu. We can pass whatever ordinance we want. We need the help of the LA County Sheriff. And they've been great and they're responsive, but they're following LA County Council and what they, they can do. And it's one of the reasons that they have actually, um, you know, to us individually Being requested a shelter for a long time of some sort, an ASL or shelter, just something small because they need that tool in order to clear people, you know, clear people out of dangerous areas. That's good to know about the 30 days. I had no idea. Uh, it's been interesting. I I'm didn't either. Little secret, Mikey, and secret to everyone, but I secretly ride my bike at night for Malibu many, many nights, and I see it all. That's where they all come out. Uh, I've been chased by homeless guys. I've, I've seen it all. I've, I was coming from Malibu Bluffs Park at night, and I almost ran one over that was literally sleeping right on the path. I mean, they did think a biker would come through at that time. And then uh, the other night, I was actually biking in the full moon with uh, Danielle's husband, Dave, who uh, was our past chair. And interesting thing we saw from Malibu Bluffs, there's that area on the side of Malibu Bluffs that there's kind of a canyon. And I know a lot of homeless people hang out there. And the next thing we know, we see two sheriffs going with flashlights and we could see them there kind of tracking somebody down there. And uh, definitely a spot where fires have started before. But it's been interesting that the activity of homeless from everything I've seen, uh, it's gone up a lot. The last year, I, I've never seen it like this. I've been biking at night for years, so... Well, like it's been, you know, you know, for me and my involvement, this has been so obvious. This was going to get worse for a long time. And I've been saying it for a long time. And it's we're not nearly as bad as, as it can or probably will get, to be honest. You know, or just we have a societal issue that, you know, lands on certain cities heads. And we're one of those cities. Yep. 
And, and just, um, yeah, it's tricky. It's really tricky. Just to clarify, uh, the whole Martin v. Boise, uh, I think it's essentially what you said earlier is, you know, it's it's a very surface level. <laughs> it's a it's a lengthy opinion, uh, Ninth Circuit opinion, and uh, you know, a lot of cities are tackling with the idea that how how is Boise, the city of Boise, and the issues that they faced, how is that related to uh, certain other cities? For instance, you were talking about how earlier, way earlier in this conversation, is Santa Monica really like Malibu? Is is for when we're talking about school district separation? Um, and the idea was that you can't criminalize like human status, like a uh, just the act of being homeless. If you if you criminalize it and you put somebody in jail for that, that's an Eighth Amendment violation, an unusual, uh, cruel and unusual punishment. Um, uh, We're not trying to put anybody in jail. No, 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 no. I'm just <laughs> maybe just me. We're trying but, to uh, put them in ho housing. Right, right. That, and what I'm I'm just clarifying what Mikey was saying earlier. And, uh, and the decision itself, you know, there's, and I, I, because this is a recorded meeting, I'm sure I'm not violating any Brown Act, anything, uh, is that uh, we, you know, it's, it's, the cities are, are, one of the difficulties is that cities are scrambling to figure out, does this apply to us? How does it apply to us? How do we change our ordinances to make it in compliance with Martin v. Boise? And, and some cities don't even know if they necessarily need to be come into compliance with Martin v. Boise because there was such a limited opinion based on a specific set of facts from a completely other jurisdiction. There's a lot of issues that are coming into this very nebulous uh, topic. So well, uh, I would add on top of that, Ian, that I think the signal from the Supreme Court is, is they're not going to rule on this until there's a lot more lawsuits at, at lower court at uh, lower court, courts around the country. Um, and that seems to be the signal I feel they're giving that they want to see how it plays out on a local level um, until potentially they hear it. Uh, I'm guessing, but that's what it looks like to me. Right. Sorry, Paul, I cut you off for a second. No, no, that's, that, that wasn't dis I'm, I'm, I, have, I haven't heard anything to disagree with. Oh, this whole time? Hey. Well, no, in the in the last time since the last time I spoke. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, you know, it's okay. um, it's a boy. It's a very tough, tough issue. You know, it's it's we're trying to be in the task force anyway. We're trying to be as thoughtful and diligent as possible on the issue. Um, you know, in, within and, and throughout the ad hocs. And you know, as they're providing reports, it's really incredible to, to the the knowledge that the other task force members have on the issue, on the issues, um, and the lengths they go to get answers. Um, I know if at, at the last meeting, um, I believe it was the assessment of current affairs committee, I think it was, uh, put together a survey, or they had a survey, or they were they were using a survey, and they went out. And, and surveyed a bunch of um, folks in, in, in and around Malibu who um, you know, claim homelessness and it, or cl claim to be homeless. And, and uh, boy, it's lots of young people, lots of older people, lots of people that have been in Malibu for a really long time, allegedly. I mean, I, I don't, you know, there's surveys. Um, there's a st standard deviation, right? But there's a um, potential error. Uh, a lot of people willing to accept employment, a lot of people who are educated, you know, it's, it's truly tragic. So we're, we're, we are trying our best to <laughs> figure out some way to, to, to provide some kind of remedy or some help or some hand up or some, something. I, I have uh, probably a bad joke, but there's a, one homeless guy that makes us just look amazing. You probably all know him, but Malba Carl, does anyone know him yet? Malibu Carl. I've known Malibu Carl for so long. I can also report that he <laughs> stole my car once. But, uh, oh my God. He's a character. Look, for those of you that don't know, <laughs> Malibu Carl's like a celebrity homeless man in Malibu on Superfighter Beach. He even has his own sticker and brand that's been selling at Becker for years. It says, Give me a dollar. That's his branded tagline. And there's a picture of him. He's got t shirts and everything. It's amazing. 
But yeah. he's the only one that's like, I mean, you know, he's a different creature altogether. But he's, he's a great, he's a great guy. And, oh, we love him. Know, I happen to know his whole backstory, and it's pretty tragic, to be honest. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he's actually a really good guy. Good guy. Did he give you your car back? Um, <laughs> the car was found by the sheriffs, and you know, he got arrested. But you know, that was the end of it. I was pretty fuming mad because we were friends. I actually loaned him the car, and he stole it. <laughs> I used to let him borrow my car to go to Malibu Colony and wash people's cars and make money. And it was working out great. Then just one day it wasn't. <laughs> wow. But well, you know. just, just to make everybody laugh a little bit too, you know what? The first time I met Malibu Carl, I hear him on his cell phone. He's got like one of these big iPhones when they first came out. Of course, he's got it. And he's like, yo, Charlie, this, 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 blah, 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 blah. blah. This is what's going on. Well, it wasn't just any Charlie. It was Charlie Sheen. <laughs> you know, like, he's like on speed dial with celebrities, and he's the inside scoop to what's happening at the beach. But awesome. he's homeless by, I think he's, yeah, he's a different beast than what's coming uh, lately. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I mean, this is, this is the last topic I have on my list. We've got technically 15 more minutes. Um, well, I guess I can I'm lock gonna... everyone in here. <laughs> Now you can, if somebody has a question, I'd be delighted to answer it, or, or I will go in and order lunch like the rest of my party has done. Actually, I have one question, if I could, Paul. Um, sure. Remember, with the Woosley fire, obviously, I was a big proponent for a Malibu siren system, and I remember I saw some stuff going forward, but what's the latest update on that? Because I, I know we're going, you know, we're back in fire season again, and one day it'd be nice to have that warning system for just about any disaster we have. Uh, the the acoustic studies, uh, which tie into the number of houses that have dual pane windows and the kind of winds we have during a fire, made the acoustic uh, acoustician, whatever you call an acoustic engineers, uh, pretty negative on the uh, on the the penetration of the of the sound of the siren. Wow. And the other thing that was brought up that that sounded very promising is there's a an instant on radio that can be turned on by by uh by activated by sending a signal to it and if we could put those in everybody's houses we could activate them in a time of emergency without any uh input from the owner of the house and and broadcast a message to them and I, uh, I have not seen anything about the cost for those. And maybe Mikey knows more than I do. I wouldn't doubt that Mikey knows more than I do. But that's... that's. Uh, so everybody would have to have this device at their house, though, right? So you'd have to actually grab every, it. Call it or... Right. Everybody would need to have a... This basically, it's a, it's a table radio. And, you know, it would be sitting in your house quietly doing nothing until it was activated. Interesting. And could it be two-way? Could it be two-way? No, it, it's not two-way. It's a receiver. Because the other night I got stranded on Las Virginis by the tunnel and I had no email. <laughs> it was scary. You know, there's, there's there's pockets up there where there's you can't reach anybody and, you know, by text, but then the car battery died and then the phone battery died. And, you know, that's what it was like. Ooh, in the fire. Sounds yeah. really horrid. Well, it is. It's dark up there and scary in the middle of the night. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but that's like in the uh, not so much about me, but the fires, you know, that was the situation where there's there's no way to reach anybody. So that's a great subject to find out. How can we? I mean, something. There's, there's a lot going on. So the sirens aren't dead. To, there was three different models they ran through. And I think the middle model had enough sirens that, you know, you'd get enough penetration that somebody could honk their horn and get, wake everyone else wow. up. Um, and then, you know, there's grant funding involved in that and studies need to happen. So it's still in the works and it's not a quick project. And then the county wanted to piggyback onto it potentially. So that's only going to slow it down and sort of this integrated Santa Monica mountain siren system. Oh, that, that's Paul cool. is right. There's other, there's other um, 
there's other new science on the sirens that I was unaware of, such as the radio activation, such as sirens that actually they can broadcast messages, not just a siren. They can oh, wow. talk through them. Um, that, you know, based with now, um, we just approved a facility that uh, for Verizon, a huge one on top of the building at Point Field and Canaan that um, has total backup generators, everything to stay alive during an emergency. And that's a huge upgrade. And there's going to be several, actually, I negotiated that several years ago after Woolsey, and they're finally coming through. Uh, I don't think the anti-5G people like them, but we should have at least three of those in Malibu. I was trying to get one at Trinkus too. I don't know that that's going to happen. So there'll be more, there's all sorts of little bits happening. And uh, and for me personally, I'll share, and I, I'm glad to be a guinea pig for this My group. My friends are in there. I just- um, My friends are in there. I just signed a uh, contract to go full solar with so with battery backup here at my house, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing aren't how there, that. Works very out. cool, off the grid. Aren't there also drones that broadcast so you could fly drones around? And I know China did that, and they. Have I love that there. idea. Yeah, I don't know. The drone thing in a fire zone is, is it grounds all other airplanes. So drones are a pro problem in a fire zone. Oh, true. If we fly, you. If Unless we're in the area where they're not, they're not fighting the fire yeah, I yet. I don't hear that coming, but you know maybe it will in the future. But the other thing we have, we have a test camera up on Castro Peak now. It's called Pano AI, and it's 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 a high def camera that spins around, and it's designed to detect fire. Wow! Um, I happen to uh, be one of the testers of it, so to speak. So I have a login for it, and. Um, that there was a little fire 10 days or two weeks ago up off Cold Canyon. And I got a notice, a text like, hey, the cameras detected a possible fire. So I jumped on and I was looking. I couldn't even look at my cell phone. I couldn't see the fire. And I kept going back and forward. It was just getting dark. And I'm like, I don't see a fire. And then I played it back and forth enough. And I'm like, oh my God, it's right. So it, Mikey, it, it saw the that. fire before I could see it visually. Mm -hmm. So it's like an algorithm detecting like faces on like nest cams, right? So it gives you like, hey, we detect that. Exactly. And there's a bunch of them up north. We only have one. And the problem with one is the company actually put it in, hoping we'll buy and buy more, um, is with one, you can't triangulate. So it'd be great to get definitely at least one more in the Santa Monica Mountains. So on any event, we can triangulate and know exactly where it is. That's cool. Yeah. So there's That's some great how those fire sprinkler coming. systems work. It's sort of sirens are just part of what we call a no power, um, you know, fire, fire system, basically it's something that'll work without power. And, um, and we need multiple systems because these fires, as you know, are not small. Yep. Well, thank you, Mikey. That's a cool update on all that there. So I really appreciate it. And it sounds like overall the Malibu houses just have such great glass built and <laughs> made it harder. Yeah, you know, I know that for Malibu West, a, a siren system would be great. I mean, we're smaller, we're not spread out. So yeah, maybe not everyone will hear it, but enough people will hear it. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think that's true with a lot of other communities. You know, I think that would be true in Corral, obviously, and, you know, up in the Pepperdine area, up in the Knoll, yeah. all of that, certainly Big Rock. All of those neighborhoods are compact enough that I think sirens would be an absolutely fantastic idea. Cool. Well, thank you again. That's awesome. Great update. Awesome. Uh, I think Barbara is talking, I think. Uh, it looks to? like yeah. the mayor went to lunch, so that's good. <laughs> can, can we put it out in the media that the mayor's out to lunch? Yeah, the, the mayor's out to lunch. Out to lunch. <laughs> Uh, wow. Susan, anything going on in real estate you have a question about? Hi. Hi. Uh, we just finished our board meeting this morning, so my mind is blown. Uh, <laughs> I have, <laughs> that's why I was in listen mode, so I could just keep working. And we're planning our installation dinner in person with real people at the Bel Air Bay Club December 9th. Yeah. Um, nice. Right. So everybody's up for that. Um, and I want to yeah, get a we, ticket. 
we just did our um, our annual meeting the other day and Mayor Grisanti spoke. So he, it's nice that he can get to lunch now. Um, okay. and we had a good meeting. We had a, a economist from the California Association of Realtors give an economic forecast. If anybody wants to see that, I can share. Barbara has it too. You can share that link. I just unlocked it. Um, and, and you can see the recording of the whole meeting as well, or just his presentation. So if that's of interest to you, I'm happy to share it. Let me know. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Another awardee over here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just think they ran out of awardees, but thank you. No, I was, you were, I think first, right? Uh, I'm not going to confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> You were first for me. <laughs> Good leader. I love That's what you put we're neighbors out. neighbors and you might need a ride through the canyon. I get it. Right, right. <laughs> okay. I saw everything you did all year. It was awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it was a long year, pandemic yeah. in Malibu. That's yeah, true. a long year. And I, you all know because you do it too. As soon as something happens, we all work harder, right? Mm -hmm. We do you know, two jobs or three jobs and we pivot it and we... So and we did it. Yeah, it would be nice to like sail for a while, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat. It worked much harder than ever before. Well, people were staying home, I guess, having it a little easier, not for us. Yeah. So, and and yeah. I don't know, I'm, Sherry Davis, I don't know who you are. Nice to meet you. Sherry, introduce yourself. Hi, Susan. Nice to meet you virtually. I am at Santa Monica College oh, and I am... I, been on the board of the chamber for about three and a half years now and we are moving forward with the construction of the satellite campus mm -hmm. in the civic center That's so exciting. it's moving along i hope you all have seen it and like how it looks uh it's going to be beautiful looks and, beautiful i saw i see it every day as it's going up sherry it's looking amazing yeah it's Good expected job. to open in 2023 it's really so, exciting. And if we can ever help you with any of that, we have the 1200 on our mailing list that are members. Um, oh, thank you. So as a community stakeholder, we're happy to help. And it, it's very exciting. Nice to meet you. Thank you. We, we do want to do some outreach to get some feedback about what kinds of classes, you know, what kind of instruction would be in demand in Malibu. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Is there any that are coming to mind right now that you guys are kind of looking at? They're like at the top of the list here? Uh, not at the moment. We, we do have classes now that are, uh, you know, well, of course, everything's virtual. Every, everything at the college mm -hmm. is virtual, so there's access for everyone. Um, but, you know, the, the SMC has always had classes in Malibu that have either been at Webster or, you know, other locations. So I think it'll go a little bit by where the registration is and I I'm not the I'm not the institutional research folks who know how to you know generate that data but that'll be a starting place but I think once it's up and people see how the classrooms look how the grounds look because it's very much designed to have a lot of outdoor spaces that are usable um, we'll get a sense and then and we want it available to the community there's a, a great community room and then of course on the 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 east end of it um, is the, the facility for the sheriff substation. Very cool. Well, th this might be selfish me, but I'll push for advertising students. <laughs> More of those I can get, the better. You know, Pepperdine's great too, but I can definitely use some SMC ones. In my last talks with, what's the gentleman's name? Uh, Don Gerard. Don, yeah, I love Don. Well, we, we talked a number of months ago and his thought was as we get closer they'll do public outreach on you know what you know what the community would like to see so yeah. it, uh, it sounded like they're going to be very active and you know want to integrate and they have you know event space like sherry said and it's really exciting it's going to look if you've seen the rent you look at the building that's being built it's one thing but you look at the renditions of what it's going to look like and it's, it's really amazing uh, yeah. can't wait sherry we do a lot of classes for the realtors but we would consider doing classes for the realtors that we could also open up to the public. Um, so we might, you know, like we're looking at doing a class on financial literacy. Um, so if we can partner with you on some things, that would be great. And we also need to rent a 
a meeting room or a classroom sometimes that we usually do it at the city um, and we've lost some of that because the city didn't want to rent out the multi-purpose room so much and they wanted to keep it for internal use so if you have any of that happening we would be interested in conference rooms meeting rooms definitely oh, yeah. and that was always envisioned as a, a really important function of the building so yeah 2023 we've got to wait a little a little longer a couple years but yeah hey, maybe COVID yeah. will be gone by then <laughs> oh chris you better knock on something <laughs> not a joke i know i like to, you know it's just endless so. <laughs> well i was gonna i was gonna make a joke susie that maybe we could run more classes there so you get more real estate agents in malibu yeah we need oh, we need more <laughs> you know what it doesn't hurt they're like virtual members and out of the 1200 that we have maybe 300 or 350 are actually tied to malibu offices and why wow, you got 1200 why do they keep joining where do they come from i think because we're like a few bucks cheaper than some of the other boards and they can join wherever but like bring it on you know well, i also bring think it's on. the brand name malibu susan i mean that has a lot yeah it doesn't hurt i guess as a as an smc alum Sherry, thank you so much. And as a realtor, Susan, thank you for all you do. <laughs> Wait, who here isn't a realtor? Okay. No yeah, right. Yeah, let's play that game. It's a shorter list. Um, uh, so we are, yeah, Barbara too, right? Yes. I'm not. Yeah, you went to SMC? No, realtor. <laughs> I'm a realtor, SMC. yeah. I'm more interested in uh, is there going to be little theater and some acting classes? You know, oh, yeah. I always looking for something else to mm -hmm. give some balance to life something fun yeah. or challenging you know the other so that's exciting yeah definitely photo, something in the photo arts photoshop yeah boy what a photographer you are thanks S yeah. susan's an amazing photographer oh yeah i've seen these are, you guys are already giving input this is great and the <laughs> costumes are designed there's a couple classrooms that'll fit the bill for all of those things there's yeah. a um, of, you know, they call it raked seating, you know, the mm -hmm. slanted seating with mm -hmm. a great, uh, the technology will be up front. So uh, there could be lectures and movies and things like that in that room, oh. computer lab. There's so. There's performance exciting. space. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. to study astronomy, you know, I love to go to a night class and then with the, you know, be able to study the stars a little bit. And it, I mean, it just creates a wonderful conversation. It's mind expanding, you know, things that kind of balance our lives here. We're so kind of isolated from some yeah. of that fun stuff. That you oh, get Barbara, then, then I gotta, I gotta jump in and balance you. I mean, I've heard that there's a new trend of the demand for students is for AI. And there's more and more students trying to learn AI. And that's been one of the biggest trending things of like the upcoming generations. Well, that's Not sure. Much about that, Sherry, but it, it's I'm sure. in that. Yeah, robotics. The, mm -hmm. Interestingly, Chris, I don't know exactly how completely integrated they would be, but the one degree that SMC is approved to have as a bachelor's degree, not just an associate's degree, is mm -hmm. in interaction design. Oh, and, very uh, cool. And it just, the legislature just approved that it is now permanent. It's going to oh, be wow. a degree at SMC for, for, it, for all, for it, keep, forever yeah right. um, so i don't know if ai is part of that but it sounds like it would be i'm pretty sure it has a play in that for sure but i, I wanted to go down the topic of ai further because that's a whole other thing i don't know if you guys follow elon musk and all that on there but <laughs> it's an interesting topic for sure Good and bad. I, hear, I hear elon's on the beach in malibu from time to time so you know maybe he'd be a guest speaker sometime Oh, we wish. I know he pulls up to Nobu in a really cool car every once in a while when he's in town. Is it a Tesla? It's got to be. <laughs> right, okay. It would look bad if it was a Ford. Right, yeah. It's like, I only drive Fords. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it's 134. I, I love hanging out with everybody, but we have billable hours. I'm just kidding. But I do have billable hours. You do. But <laughs> right. well, you might I, be the only one. <laughs> Uh, but but truly, thank you, everybody, for, for jumping in, opine or opining. Um, Mikey, Paul is out to lunch. Um, our webmaster and chair, Chris. Uh, Barbara, our beloved host, and our awardees, and our board members, all of our sponsors. <laughs> uh, 
Tesla has not sponsored, but <laughs> hopefully we'll get you in soon. Uh, so Elon, if you are watching this, which I'm sure you are, um, give me a call or at least return all my calls. Um, so thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good no, to thank you. Thank you. Hope to see job. you all soon. Nice hey. to you. Hey. See you at 5 o'clock. <laughs> see you guys at the mixer. Bye. Great job. See you here. tonight at the Broad Street Oyster. You can oh. make it, everybody. Thank you, Chris. All right. There'll be lobster rolls, minis. So outdoors. <laughs> outdoors. I was going to come, but I didn't go to Malibu today. I'm home. Ah, so. uh, <laughs> oh, that's even better. <laughs> All right, guys. There you are. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Bye, bye, everybody.